Okay. The other thing that this sidebar has is this big TV image down here. So let's take a look at that. Uh, one thing I notice right away here is that this, this TV antenna comes up here, and then if you follow it straight left, that goes right into the word learn more. Now, I mean, that's something we could accomplish, but we'll have to think about how important that really is to the design. Uh, why I mention it is because you can think of all elements on the page as blocks. Even this learn more. Uh, more thing is a block and that block would extend all the way up here and this TV is a block and that would extend all the way up here these two blocks are inside of each other really so you know we could just bump this antenna down a little bit you know a couple ten pixels and then those boxes wouldn't be inside of each other uh, and that would just be fine if you ask me but uh, if, you, if it was really important that this antenna went up as high as it is here, you know, we could apply some negative top margin or something and bump it up, but I really just don't think it's that important. So um, let's get it out of here. I turned off the layer of that text you can see, and then we can just take the crop tool and see if we can get a decent crop on it. Let's see. Now the sh this shadow area down here we definitely want to capture is with because it'll look like it's cut off if we don't get enough of it so that looks about right crop it down and then we can save and export for devices now I'm not sure if that's gonna fit in my little recording area here but I'll try to get it in there as best as I can now, something like this with a with gradients and detail and the variety of color like that it's generally gonna work out best as a JPEG let's see if I can get it so you can see the options here sure uh, quality level of 60 here makes it about 12k and you can this is actually how it's gonna look it's showing you a preview of the final version here so that looks pretty good to me let's save this thing out let's save it right into the folder where I need it actually and we'll just call it TV Okay, let's switch back to our markup. So at the end of the right column here, we'll just use an image tag to get that TV in there. Image, source, images, TV. It's a good measure to always give it an alt tag. Makes your code validate too, which is nice. So that should be all it takes to get that TV in there. Let's jump over and take a look. There it is. Oops, I accidentally put it. And look at that. I oh my oh, it didn't get quite enough of the shadow. That's okay, I can fix that. But I should have put the image tag after learn more, just like the mock-up. So let me go fix that quick. Cut. Paste. Clean up these spaces. Save it. And there's our sidebar. The one discrepancy we got right now is this this blue with underline is the browser default for an anchor link. We can actually go ahead and change that. I'll fix that. That's pretty easy. And then our next step here is to get our little chunk in over here like the mock-up with the remote control. Let's take a look at the mock-up again. Remember that. Let's back up a step here before we cropped. this quick jump section now this the remote control comes up and extends remember how the TV antenna and the text those were kinda gonna be boxes on top of each other I didn't think it was that important in the sidebar because it was just this little antenna that was sticking up too high but this remote control I think it is kind of important that this text kinda comes down and the remote control comes up that's kind of important to the design of this area so we'll actually deal with that in this section All right, the last thing we need to do here is work on this quick jump section over here as a part of this mock-up. Uh, just for the sake of speeding things up here, I've already gone ahead and written the markup for it. It's a div with an ID of quick jumps. It's got an H3 tag that says the text quick jumps. A 
couple of paragraph tags that are links that start with bullet points with the text in here. The reason I put these bullet points in a span here is if you look back here at the Mako, the little bullets are yellow, just a little design touch. So uh, I wrap it in a span so we could have some CSS control over that. So let's start with the styling this up a little bit. First of all, we need to style the whole quick link section itself. So here's the left column. Let's just keep staying specific. We wouldn't need to. We could just put this number sign here and, and, and say, yeah, quick jumps, and that would work just fine. But I like the idea of staying specific as possible. So main content. Left column, quick jumps. Okay, I think we're going to need about 200 pixels of width there. Float it to the left. Let's give it some margin to the right. So push that stuff away a little bit, give it some breathing room. And let's leave it at that for now. Uh, now we need the, the, the paragraph tags. It looks different in the mock-up. If you look, these are everything. Well, let's start with the header tag. It's got a yellow background, red text. It's centered in that box. Uh, we already looked at the yellow bullets, but all the text in here is uppercase. Uh, it's italicized. So let's get started writing that stuff. Keeping with our specificity thing. Let's do it like this. The P tags that are in quick jumps, that are in the left column, that are in main content, get some specifics here. Like I said, uppercase for one thing. The font weight looked pretty bold to me, so let's bold it. And let's space out those letters a little bit, just because that's how it looked to me. And then remember that span that wrapped that bullet point. Get even just one more step specific. And say the things that are in the span, the color of that yellow color, which happens to be E9BC3D. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And they're going to be links because they're quick jumps. But I set up our link color in this document you can see here to be that red color that we've been using with no text decoration basically meaning it removes the underline and then on rollover it underlines so that'll make those links in the quick jumps red but in the mock-up they're black so let's just say that links within the quick jump section so that PA are gonna be black so that's that. Now let's look at the header. We use this H3 tag up here for the quick jumps. That's got all kinds of styling to it. Let's do that part. Here's our header tags, keeping everything organized here. Since there's a lot of things, I'll do it in this style. Font size, fairly big. Uppercase again. Uh, it's also italic. It's spaced out even more so than the text below it. Uh, the big important ones here for style though is it's got that background color which is well, I think we should just let's just stick with that red and then the color of the letters themselves are they just so happen to be 5E0D04. Okay, and then to, to give it a little space and make it kind of block like looking, it's just five padding, five pixels of padding, which will apply that five pixels of padding on, on all sides top, right, bottom, and left. And then let's push stuff down just a little bit. So let's take a look at how that looks. 
save everything. Oops. Yeah, that background color shouldn't have been red if the text is red. But we did pretty good here. All caps with the black with the underline. Looks pretty good. Let's uh fix that color quick. The background color should be this yellow color. There we go. And also mix mi we missed the text alignment should be centered in there. Center. There we go. That's looking healthy. Now let's look at the mock-up again. Remember the remote control. That's down there. We're going to need that as an image. So just like we cut out the TV, let's turn some stuff off around it. So we can get a nice clean crop of it. Let's see what we get here. pretty clean. Save as again as a JPEG as remote.jpg. Okay, now well, let's back up and move to our markup. Uh, I think a good way to apply this is going to be a, as a background image to that quick links div just because then, I don't know, we can, we can uh, have it be in the background, have the text be on top of it, and solve that little block issue. I just think that's kind of a smart way to deal with it in this case. So let's apply that remote as a background image. We want it to be on the bottom, centered not repeating but if we just leave it at that let's just see what happens it's just gonna kind of cover this whole area I think and that's not what we want we want it to be on the bottom more so I think what we can do is just apply padding to the bottom of this quick links thing and extend the height of the box and the image will hang out down here but it'll be just enough room so let's take a look at the height of that remote image that we made. Remember, you can always go to the finder, click it, and click uh, Command I or Get Info, which will mm, give us this and the dimensions of it. It's 198 by 128. We don't need to apply it the full 128 of height to the padding because we want it to mingle a little bit. So let's try padding bottom like 115. Let's see if that does it. There we go. We could even, let's just pull it up just a little bit more because that was the whole point of doing this kind of. 110. Looks good. So I think that pretty much wraps it up. We basically turned this Photoshop mock-up into an HTML and CSS website. I mean, it's maybe it's not quite super perfect, but it's definitely, you know, within tweaking distance of uh, a good interpretation of this. Well, this is just pixels. This is, you know, a real bona fide HTML and CSS website. So thanks for listening. Remember to visit CSS Tricks. That's css-tricks.com for more of this stuff. And uh, please feel free free to send any feedback on these things. I know it's a little rough going here at first, but I hope these uh, take off and get better. Thanks very much, everyone.